In this video, I will go over three related ways of analyzing DNA. The first one will be showing you the graphic analysis that is available on Ancestry.com. The second one will be the one-to-one -one match analysis on GEDmatch.com. And then finally, we will look at how you can analyze this data from GEDmatch in Excel. So first, on Ancestry.com, you want to go to the DNA pages and we will look at my DNA results. The thing I want to show you is what Ancestry calls DNA circles, which is right here. And now you are seeing all of my DNA circles and I will click on one of my Bonner ancestors. So let's use Thomas. I will scroll down just a little bit and you have this lovely graphic here. And basically Ancestry takes your specific DNA data and your family tree to compile people in the database that are likely related to you through this ancestor. Now, I personally have submitted many of the DNA tests on my Bonner relatives, and they are all in this list. However, there are some on this list I do not know. For example, I do not know who RS is right here on the list. But if I click on their name, I can actually contact them through Ancestry.com. One thing that I would ask this person is, have you uploaded your DNA kit to GEDmatch.com? And if they have, then I can ask them for their kit number on GEDmatch. Or if they haven't uploaded it, I can send them a link to my video on this YouTube channel about how to upload their kit there, if they are willing to do so. If you ask nicely, often they will do so. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, let's go over to GEDmatch.com for step two of this process. On GEDmatch, I can do a one-to-one -one compare. And if you're on the home page, you basically scroll down just a little bit and there's a one-to-one -one compare. Now I'm going to compare a couple of kits. I just happen to remember the numbers right off the top of my head. And what I want is a graphic. I think the graphic is kind of fun. <laughs> so I always choose to have the graphic and the positions. And I'll show you what that means. I click on submit and here are all of the chromosomes that are shared between myself and this other person that is related to me. And if there is a match, which we have a match on chromosome seven from this position to that position. So we match on 17.2 centimorgans. Well, basically all that means is that that little tiny slice of chromosome right there is where we share DNA. Now the great thing about GEDmatch is that you can upload Ancestry DNA kits here, but you can also upload other DNA kits like uh, DNA kits from 23andMe or Family Tree DNA. So whichever one you use, you can use this tool to compare DNA kits regardless of where they come from. Now, what would I do with this data? This is wonderful. I can see the graphic and all that sort of stuff. Now I do happen to know that this person is related to me and I know exactly who we are connected to um, several generations back. We're actually descended from the same person back in 1744. And so we share very little DNA, but we share enough that we know that we are related and we know exactly who we are related through. So now what will I do with this information? That takes us to step three. In step three, we go to Excel. Now here in Excel, what I have done is I have compiled all kinds of information on all of the DNA kits. I have put them all through that one-to-one -one match on uh, GEDmatch.com. And I've compiled a giant database of information about DNA matches between me and other people. And so I, I want to show you the, the one that I did the comparison to was this person right here, Sandra Ruth Bonner. She did not know exactly how she was related to Bonners in Pickens County, Alabama. She figured she was, she just didn't know how she might be related. And we worked on it and I figured out that we are actually related, but you have to go back five generations before we find a common ancestor. So I'm going to filter on Sandra Ruth just to see what my data says about her and myself and other people in my database. So here what we have, we have Sandra Ruth, 
And she has a uh, DNA match with one of my dad's first cousins. She has a DNA match with me. She has a DNA match with another one of my father's first cousins. She has a match with my dad's brother, my uncle. She also has a match with another one of my dad's first cousins. And she also has a match with someone who is actually more in my generation. And she is the granddaughter of one of these first cousins. It's kind of complicated to explain. But as you can see over here, we all match on chromosome 7. And we all have this common ancestor of Thomas and Margaret between all of us. So even Judge Elton is the grandson of Thomas and Margaret. So we all are descended from Thomas and Margaret. So we all have a match on this chromosome 7, some more than others. But it's all kind of in the same range or uh, at least on matching segments. So the great thing about doing something like this in Excel is that as you start to analyze how people are related, you can start to get a sense of, yeah, this DNA actually appears to be from Thomas and Margaret. Now we don't know how much of this DNA is actually from Thomas himself or from Margaret herself, but we do know that from the combination of those great, 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 great grandparents, that we have all inherited a little bit of DNA from that pair on chromosome 7. The great thing about this too is that as I was comparing all of my DNA kits initially for all of my family members, I decided I was going to compare everybody regardless of whether I thought that there was an actual DNA connection or not. And I actually was very surprised. I found out that several of my family on both sides of my family are actually related through different people which I would have never have thought. And the only way that I found it was to be able to do this type of analysis. And in summary, this is how I believe Ancestry does their DNA circles. They use chromosome matches and the family tree data to compile the information. Now I know I've thrown a lot at you in this video. You may have to watch it several times to kind of get the idea of what we're trying to do here. And absolutely, if you have questions, please do not hesitate to leave them below. I would be happy to answer your questions, or at least we can work through an issue if you run into it, and I'll be happy to help. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on another video.